Welcome to Inspire Me with Jay. This is a podcast to inspire, uplift, show forth the love of God, and help usher in the spiritual awakening. Welcome to Inspire Me with Jay. I'm your host, Jay Spillers, author and teacher, and I have Beth on the show today. Beth, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for the opportunity. I'm doing pretty good. So what is it that you do? You have a ministry, don't you? And how did you get started? Yes. Well, to understand a little bit of what I do, you have to go back a little bit and just understand the story. So my husband was in the military for 25 years. He served with the Air Force. And I had met him at a wedding. I was a bridesmaid. He was a groomsman. Yes, it does happen sometimes. And uh, he was already serving in the military. We did a long distance. Um, and I decided to marry him, but had no idea what I was getting into marrying someone in the military. And we got married. And I'm very happy that we did because I'm happily married. But um, the first year was really rough as I did not know what I had been as what signed up for marrying someone in the military. So we moved three times our first year of marriage. And then we finally showed up to that first duty station and he deployed. So I found myself just kind of wondering what in the world have I gotten myself into? Um, we were not Christ followers at the time. Um, so through the difficulties that we were dealing with, I didn't have a faith to lean on. Uh, and he got back from deployment and marriage was just harder and harder because I was so unhappy with the military and unfortunately let him know that often. We moved again. And um, this time we ran into some old friends of my husband's who were also serving in the military and they invited us to get involved in their Bible study. Um, and we had never studied the Bible before, but we decided to go. And that um, began for us um, an understanding of the gospel and understanding that we were sinners in need of saving um, and then surrendering our lives to Jesus Christ. And partially um, it's because we just saw the scriptures come alive. I, in particular, that study that we went to was on Genesis and we jumped into the study right as they were beginning to study Sarah and Abraham. And I saw in Sarah's life, many parallels to my life as a military spouse. Um, and it made me feel very seen by the Lord. And it made me feel that he could help me in my challenges and that he saw my struggles. And a normal person might not read the story of Sarah and Abraham and think, oh, that sounds like a military family. But I mean, I'm not a normal person. Um, but when God told Sarah and Abraham uh, to go to a land that he would show them, that's what we in the military do often which is move. We call that a permanent change of station or PCS. And they were moving and transitioning often. You know, they went to Bethel and they went down to Egypt and they went back to Bethel. They went to the Oaks of the Marm. Um, and so they were transitioning a lot, moving a lot, reforming community. And also Abraham was a warrior who fought in combat. Um, and you also might not think of that when you think of Abraham, but when he went to rescue his nephew Lot, um, with his 318 trained men, he went and fought against four kings and all of their armies. And so I believe that was a combat deployment. And Sarah was at home in her home tent. Um, so that is my journey um, to Christ. Um, and then I, my, my husband continued to serve. We moved 14 total times. Uh, and because I had become a believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit began to work on my heart to make me not feel sorry for myself about being a military spouse, but really see it as a calling. Now my husband was called to serve. I believe um, men and women serving in uniform do have a calling. It's not just a job. It's something they feel a special obligation uh, to perform. So I began to see myself as called as well, that if God had ordained for me to marry a military man, then I too was called and I was called to be on mission for God as we moved around um, and to impact the military families in our midst. Uh, so that began for us being on mission for God. 
we continued to do that the rest of our marriage. And then when my husband was ready to retire, there was a ministry that invited us to come on staff. We are now missionaries to the military, which is something we were doing when we were on active duty as well. Um, But this time it's now our full-time job and we work with a ministry of Campus Crusade for Christ. It's called Crew Military. So we are focused on winning people to Christ, building them up in their faith, and then sending them out on mission. And fortunately, when you're dealing with the military, the military does a lot of the sending for you. Mm -hmm. So Campus Crusade for Christ has a military um, ministry that they do because I knew they did a lot on college campuses. Yes, most people are just familiar with their larger ministry, which is their campus ministry. But we do have a military ministry. We are in about 60 locations in the United States, and we are in 32 countries around the world. Um, And in those other countries, we have military members from those foreign militaries that are serving alongside with us. Um, The locations that we have in the United States, we are at all of the basic training bases. So that's for the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines. And then we are at other operational bases. Um, In those situations, we do a lot of family marriage ministry. Um, But we do have um, also discipleship relationships that we will um, have with military members or their families. So your husband's retired from the military then? Yes, he's retired now and we work together in a full-time ministry. You're listening to the Inspire Me with Jay podcast. Please do like and subscribe to the channel, bringing hope and inspiration to the world. So, do, I mean, do you guys coordinate with like any of the chaplains in the military or is it? Yes, that's exactly chaplain? what we do. We come alongside the chaplains. So anything that we do, we are serving um, under their authority. Um, we come alongside them and say, hey, we recognize there's a lot of needs Um, And you are undermanned and overworked. So how can we come alongside you with the hope and healing of Jesus Christ? So for us, um, that looks like a lot of times um, we will host Bible studies, either for men or women. We will host marriage um, small groups. We will host parenting small groups. And then we also have some Christ-centered combat trauma healing courses that we will do Um, for couples. One of the things that is unique about the ministry that we partner with is that our Christ-centered combat trauma healing courses are designed for the warrior who has combat trauma, as well as for their spouse. We want them to come together. It's a 12-week course, and they're going to sit through the same curriculum together. We do encourage the warrior with PTSD to meet separately with others that are also struggling with PTSD themselves. And then we'll encourage the the spouses uh, to also meet. But what we have found is that um, spouses and and often children will have secondary PTSD um, where they exhibit a lot of the same symptoms as the person with PTSD because they've been living in a home with someone dealing with trauma. Mm-hmm. We do well, also your, partner is, with with local churches um, and we'll offer mm-hmm. some military specific studies. Everything else I mentioned that we would do at the chapel, we'll do with local churches. So what was your question? Mm-hmm. Oh, I was just going to ask, is your is your ministry pretty much non-denominational or interdenominational? Yes, we're non-denominational. Again, we will work with um, any church in the area um, that's interested in hosting some of our programs. Um, but yes, we um, are just evangelical Christian um, and just come alongside the chaplains, anything that we do on post or base, depending upon if it's army or other branches of the military. So was your husband Air Force? Yes, my husband was Air Force, but we work with all the branches of the military here in the Springs, Colorado Springs, where I live. Um, We have Air Force, we have Space Force, and we have Army bases. uh, And then we 
have the NORAD NORTHCOM um, Central Command, uh, which will have people from all branches of the military uh, stationed there. So we are a very military dense area. And in the Bible studies that I teach for military spouses and uh, military women, I've had people from all of those branches of the military um, involved. But do you work with a lot with the Air Force Academy since you're in Colorado Springs? Yes. So our ministry with the Air Force Academy looks a little bit different there. We are engaged in ministry with cadets at the Air Force Academy. And that looks more like a traditional college uh, campus crusade for Christ um, mission, except for that everyone who is in our ministry will go on to serve in the military because they will have that minimum five-year commitment. And hmm. people from the Air Force Academy, um, the majority of them will go on to serve in the Air Force or the Space Force. They are direct commissioning now into the Space Force out of the Air Force Academy. And obviously there are a few people that will um, commission with some of the air, other Air Forces like Army or Navy um, initially, but the majority of them are Air Force and Space Force. Now, is the Space Force basically like a, a wing of the Air Force? Nope. They it, are it their own branch. Branches? They're their own branch of the military. That happened, uh, I want to say, four or five years ago. Trump actually um, came out with that announcement. So um, it, it was sometime during his administration that they made them a separate um, branch of the military. So they're no longer under the Air Force like they were. They now have their own command. They have their own uniforms. Um, you know, and there, one thing that I've learned is that there's, there's a whole level of warfare happen, you know, in space that we, the normal person isn't aware of, but they are protecting the space, um, the, the airspace up in space for us. Well, I mean, are they kind of connected to NASA? I mean, you know, because NASA is military to a certain extent. Um, I I'm sure there's some crossover, but um, I mean, it it's a pretty big branch now. I mean, and they're growing and growing. Um, they've got their own generals. Um, they do a lot with satellites, um, but there's, you know, a, a whole lot of what they do is very classified um, because of the mm -hmm. nature of what they do. So unfortunately, huh. I, I, I haven't been told a lot of information. I've had a lot of questions for our Space Force friends, and um, they just kind of chuckle and say they can't answer a lot of those questions. Huh. Well, I mean, do they actually deploy people into space? No, like they're NASA not deploying kind of people into space um, now, but they um, they do have bases that are doing um, monitoring of things that happen in space where they will deploy um, other places. I think there's um, there's multiple places where we've got a Space Force people deployed. I can't name any of them at this time, but no, they're here on the Earth. Um, but hmm. they are doing space operations. Hmm. Like when you deal with people with PTSD, what kind of special programs do you do with them? So we have some of curriculum that a person in our ministry wrote probably 15 to 20 years ago. It's Christ-centered healing uh, for combat trauma. But we also partnered with another ministry called Reboot, and the program for the military is called Military Reboot. And you can just Google that. Um, they also have uh, healing programs for first responders, um, but we use their military course that was created from the Combat Trauma Healing Manual that was written by our ministry. Um, we also have another manual called When War Comes Home which is a manual for healing specifically written for the spouse um, who is dealing, you know, with now a spouse who has PTSD. Um, but the, there are multiple courses that are 12 week. There's a level one, a level two, and then there's a general 
trauma course. Basically what those courses are is they took the manuals and they've put them in group format with videos. Um, so it's, uh, you'll watch a short video and there's discussion. Um, so that's how it works. And um, basically we, our philosophy is that it's going to be a discipleship relationship to walk them through that healing. But we firmly believe that there is a spiritual wound that happens when you are dealing with combat trauma, which is PTSD or other invisible wounds of war. And so there is a healing that needs to happen spiritually in order for you to get whole. Hmm. What kind of what kind of work do you do? You do specific Bible studies yourself? Yeah. So I lead. I have actually written a book that is based on Genesis twelve through twenty two, the life of Sarah and Abraham, and it basically draws off the parallels between Sarah and Abraham's life and how that can speak to the challenges of the military life. It is very scripturally based. So I, you know, detail the scripture. I did a lot of research and study into cultural contextualization, which is understanding the culture at the time of when it was written. Uh, and But then I am making application to the military wife life. Um, that book will release in October. It's publishing with B&H Publishing Group, which is Life Waste Trade Book Division. Uh, but for now, I will help facilitate and lead Bible studies for military wives and women. Um, so I do that at the local bases. And I also have an online study that I will offer periodically for anyone all over the world who wants to just join my group and be a part of that Zoom study. Um, all of those studies are not original content for me. Sometimes I'll use other workbooks of good Bible studies that I think are relevant. I just want to keep women in the word of God and keep them pointed to the Lord, you know, for their strength and their comfort and um, just abundant life that's found in him. So is your book going to be on Amazon? Yes, it's already available on pre-order. So you could just uh, Google my name, Beth Runkle, that's um, R-U-N-K-L-E. And it's another move, God, 30 encouragements for embracing your life as a military wife. So it's available up there now. It's also at Walmart. It's at Lifeway and it is at Barnes and Noble. And um, additionally, I blog. I have lots of great content for military spouses on my blog. That is um, www.bethrunkle.com. Again, that's B-E-T-H-R-U-N-K-L-E. -E. And then for people that are on Instagram or Facebook, I do put out weekly content. I'll usually post five days a week with content from military wives, usually with a spiritual direction, um, you know, pointing them to the Lord Jesus. Um, and people can follow me um, public. So it's Beth Runkle writes, Beth period Runkle period writes. Um, and I also do Instagram lives once a week where I invite on someone who has some expertise in the military spouse world. And we'll just talk about a topic. It's 15 minutes. Um, but basically so my that, desire is just to, point people to the Lord as they go through this lifestyle. Hmm. So it's sort of like a podcast you have on Instagram. Yeah. I mean, I don't call it a podcast because it's really just me getting on and yeah, we go live. It's just 15 minutes. So it's a lot shorter. Um, I, I have found that if I go over 15 minutes, that Instagram won't allow me to repost it. And then I kind of lost the, the great content that I got from my guest. But yeah, I, probably that's the thing that you could compare it to the most. It's just a short once a week podcast on that topic. Hmm. Yeah, because I mean, maybe like, I don't know if you'd ever switch to like Facebook, it might be you, you can go longer and you get on like StreamYard or something, you know. And yeah, you I haven't done that yet because. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. also getting um, finishing up my Master's of Theological Studies. Um, so, um, that between full-time ministry and also being a mom and wife, um, have kept me busy. So it's not something I've put my toe into yet, but, um, you know, I just, I want to be obedient to what God calls me to do. And you do like a zoom Bible study too, then. 
Yes, I do a Zoom Bible study um, periodically, and people can just find me um, on social media and let me know they're interested, and I'll add them to the group. Um, it's the majority of the women are military spouses. Um, so we can engage just about the Bible, but we have that shared culture because we all have done the crazy move often, how husband be deployed, husband be gone a lot, um, not live near family, not have the help of family. We have those shared experiences that we can connect about. So um, you, you do doing like a theological studies uh, master's program too? Yes. What are you what are you hoping to do with that? Just get more knowledgeable or do you have a direction in ministry you want to take that? Um I don't have um, a goal or a plan um, beyond I really enjoy learning um and I love the scripture and I want to you know be a better student and teacher of the word of God. Um I think also um, women often aren't thought of as doing theological studies. Um, but I believe that God has called me to love him with my heart and with my soul, but also with my mind. So for me, um, getting a theological studies degree is, is really just about me loving him with my mind. Mm -hmm. And so you, does your husband do a lot of these things too, where he teaches Bible studies and does different programs and stuff. Yeah. So some of the things we do together when we do marriage, parenting and combat trauma um, healing, we're get, doing those together as a couple. Um, and that's what we began doing when my husband was still on active duty. So we started out our life of ministry. We actually went to a marriage conference um, within the first year that we had become believers in Christ. And at that marriage conference, we saw the biblical blueprint for marriage, um, which, you know, set out the roles in marriage. It talks about, you know, that a husband is to love his wife sacrificially as Christ loves the church. The wife is to respect. Um, it explained uh, that marriage is a covenant um, between, you know, husband, wife and the, and the Lord. Uh, it also explained to us that, you know, marriage is not really 50, 50. That's what the world says. Um, but really it should be a hundred, a hundred. We should be trying to outgive one another. And that my response towards my husband, um, really shouldn't be a response to, towards how he's treated me. It should be a response to my heavenly father and for, you know, the salvation he's given me. In other words, I respect my husband, whether or not he deserves it, because that's what God calls me to do. In the same way, my husband has to show me sacrificial love. And that's the love, the same love that Christ shows the church, right? He died for her. So he has to show me sacrificial love again, whether or not I deserve it, but as a response to um, the sacrifice and the salvation that he has through Christ. So we learned that it dramatically transformed our marriage because we had been trying to do marriage the world's way. And we, we learned these just great principles. And at the last session of that marriage conference we were at, they talked about that if you've, you know, enjoyed what you've learned, that there are some small group studies available for sale um, that you can grab and you can teach these concepts to others um, and, you know, have a small group in your home and you can invest in your neighbors. And so my husband and I, we said, this is, this is the greatest stuff. And we know a lot of people around us that need to hear this information. So we purchased the, you know, $8 guide um, and we took it back to our Air Force base. And we began hosting in our home marriage small groups where it was a small group Bible study. Um, very simple. We were brand new believers, so we did not have much biblical knowledge, um, but we knew how to read and tell time. And we were willing to open our home up to others. So we began doing that. And that what began, you know, a, a really a lifetime of our ministry of opening our home to others um, and engaging them in investing in their marriage. And we were pouring into other people's marriages. But really, one of the greatest parts is that as we are investing in other people's marriages, we were making deposits in our own marriage. So that's what we began doing. And yes, we do a lot of that now together, but we also do have our own 
um, ministries that we do separately. So one of the things that we do with cadets at the Air Force Academy is we are engaged in discipleship relationships with them. So I disciple women that are cadets at the Air Force Academy. My husband does the same with men. Um, I also will lead uh, Bible studies for women uh, down at Peterson Space Force Base, where I've got women from who are spouses or members of the armed forces from all the branches down there. Um, my husband will do some things for men at the local bases. Uh, the majority of them are serving in uniform. And then we also do come together to do what we call pre-marriage mentoring. So we will meet with engaged couples uh, to walk them through uh, pre-marriage mentoring. So it's about 10 weeks of, you know, just evaluating, are they ready to get married? Is this the right person? And then teaching them a lot of those biblical, biblical blueprints for marriage that we learned, um, at that marriage conference. We're just passing on a lot of that information. Um, and honestly trying to share with, uh, some of the couples, some of the mistakes that we made. Um, so hopefully they can learn from our mistakes. Are you looking for a devotional that will radically transform your walk with Christ and revolutionize the world at the same time? Check out my latest book, Walk as Children of the Light. This book focuses on everything you need to be fully equipped and discipled in Christ. Prayer, meditation, scripture, love, gratitude, and much, much more. Available on Amazon, five-star rating. Have you gotten a lot of positive feedback from your ministry work? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I, th I think it's the most rewarding job in the world. Um, we get the pleasure of, you know, being involved often in leading people to Christ. Um, we get to see people walk in freedom as they walk with Christ. We get to help many people. Um, just grow in their walk with the Lord or really understand what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, so yes, it's, it's really amazing. Um, we are so um, blessed by the Lord that he allows us to be a part of this. And, you know, we really believe that we may not be serving on a foreign mission field, but we have the opportunity to impact people are, that are going to go all over the world and hopefully take the gospel with them. Do you get, I mean, do you have people contacting you all the time, you know, that are in your, your, your ministry? Um, yes and no. Um, so a lot of the ministry, you know, happens at the, the local bases. Um, so either the post or the bases, um, we do connect with people outside, you know, we'll meet them for coffee, um, cadets are in and out of our home all the time. Um, and we love that. Um, we were only able to raise two children. We have one child by adoption and another by birth. Um, we always wanted more children. Um, and, you know, that was not God's plan for that. And I believe that's because we have so many spiritual children. Um, we literally have uh, hundreds of cadets um, that we are privileged enough to be a part of their life. They're not all in my house at once, but they definitely come and go. And so I joke around that my, both of my kids are in college now. So I say I'm an empty nester who has lots of birdies that visit often. So um, lots of other people's kids come and hang out at my house. And it's a really special relationship because they're not my children, um, but they want to hang out with me and they want to listen to the wisdom that I have to offer, which I don't know if you have kids, Jay, but often your own kids don't want to hear that from you. So my biggest prayer for my own kids is that, you know, they have somebody like me in their life that's pouring into them, that is discipling them, that they're willing to listen to. Are they either one of your kids interested in going in the military or being part of a military ministry? Um. Our son is not, um, he has, um, actually he just graduated, um, from Liberty university with a film production degree. So he does not seem to be following in his dad's footsteps. Um, and my daughter, um, isn't planning on going in the military herself, um, but she is very ministry minded. So it'll be interesting to see where the Lord wants to lead her. She is interested in full-time Christian ministry. And so I don't know 
where that will be. It's funny because when um, my husband was a pilot, um, so he flew fast, cool looking, cool sounding airplanes if you're a kid. Uh, so it, when the kids were little, um, they were very enamored with it. Um, but neither one of them, you know, has chosen that. And I really can't say why, um, except for they did move a tremendous amount in their life. Um, so perhaps, you know, I guess it's just a guess that they're looking for some stability. Although I don't know that really any career, you know, guarantees that you're going to live one place and you're not going to move. I mean, we live in a very transient world now. So like, what is the, uh, is there like an overarching theme that you have in most of your military ministry? Like there's one goal you want to set before the people and, you know, that are under your ministry? Well, honestly, I think it's, it's just to point them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So our founder, um, it, our ministry was founded during the Vietnam War. And our founder, Colonel Jack Fain, believed that a man or woman serving in uniform deserves first priority to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ at this time. And so we really just want to introduce people serving in uniform and their families to the hope and healing that's found in Jesus. I mean, if you think about it, a person that's going to be, you know, fighting with weapons and potentially going to war, you know, they are going to face their maker potentially uh, sooner um, than the typical civilian person. Um, so we're really just excited about um, introducing them to the salvation that's found in Jesus. But, you know, it's not just about that. It's also about the abundant life that is found in the here and now from following Jesus. I, I personally can truly testify to that. God has dramatically transformed my life. I was bitter, selfish, and reluctant and hated everything about the military. And then when Jesus Christ came into my life, I embraced it as this is my mission field. This is the people that God has called me to reach because God has given me so much joy. And so I want to point others to that. So anything we do, if it's uh, combat trauma, if it's marriage, if it's parenting, we're pointing them to the truth of Jesus, but more importantly, to his word um, and how his word can help you with anything you're struggling with. Um, so it, it's just about uh, recognizing um, that, you know, any struggle we're going through, we need the hope and healing of Jesus Christ. But sometimes you get military personnel that, they weren't particularly religious, but they're looking for greater meaning and purpose in their life. And they come to a ministry. Yeah. Or, or, um, we do, we get people that have questions about faith, you know, I mean, sometimes we'll interact with people that are exploring all the different kinds of, you know, faith groups, um, especially with the younger Gen Z, I think they are more curious and questioning than perhaps my generation, um, I think my generation is a little bit more accepting and just understands there's a right and a wrong. Um, the younger generation is truth is more relative to them. Um, so they are more questioning. So we'll have people who just have questions, you know, and we're, we're very happy to engage with them. Um, you know, one of the things we like to do is just build relationships with people and be encouraging and be, be a help to them, be a friend. Um, we certainly don't shove our faith down their throat, um, but we're just sharing the joy that we have found. Now, if people come to a marriage or a parenting or a combat trauma, you know, they, they likely already have difficulties in their life. And so in that situation, the greatest thing I can point someone to is what has been the source of healing in my own life which is a relationship with Jesus Christ and the truth of his word and how I fully believe that God's word is living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword and able to penetrate lies. And so we need that and anyone in trouble needs that. So is there like one last final word you'd like to leave with the audience before we close out? 
Um, yeah, I would just like to say, even if you yourself are not serving in the military or perhaps you're not a military spouse, you might know someone who is. And everything that we're doing, we just want to minister to people um, that are serving in uniform in their families. And so I would encourage you, if you know someone that's, you know, maybe it's your niece or your grandchild or your neighbor, um, you know, please have them connect with us. They can go to my website. They can go to crewmilitary.org. Crew is spelled C-R-U and then military.org. Um, and that we can connect them with the ministry and um, be happy to answer questions. Um, we, you know, we really just want to impact military families and military members um, and just offer them blessings and hope. Um, so um, we would just love to connect with them and minister to them if we can in any way. Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks for being on the show and people can um, check you out. What's the easiest place to find you like Facebook or Instagram? I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Again, that's Beth dot runkle r u n k l e dot rights and then my website is www.bethrunkle.com beth runkle is one word okay well thanks for being on the show it's a pleasure to have you great thanks so much jay i appreciate the opportunity have you ever wondered whether the bible was compatible with the near death experience in my book Heaven's Truth, the parallels between the Bible and the near-death experience. Your faith will be strengthened while you support this channel. In Heaven's Truth, you will learn about near-death experiences and other similar experiences in the Bible. Support for the Bible contained in NDEs. A central theme that runs through both the Bible and NDEs. How the NDE brings the Bible to life for these modern times. Evidence for both the Bible and the NDE, and much more. Great book, Spillers does an excellent job weaving the relationship between NDEs and the scriptures. Five stars on Amazon, available on Amazon.